brethren, we thank God for today. We thank God for His grace. We thank God for His favor today. The Lord has shown us mercy and has graced us with power and strength to be here this day. Hallelujah. I have a word from the Lord for you. A very powerful word. It will change your life. It will bless you. Amen. Um, the message that God has given to me to share with you today is a very blessed message. Amen. My name is Reverend Kinsley. And also the name of this program is Men of Eternity. Men of Eternity. Hallelujah. Now, I'll, before we go into the word of God and even before I give the topic, I'm excited about the topic myself. Um, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we ask, O oh God, even as we are about to study, when we pray for understanding, we pray for revelation. We ask, O oh God, that through this word, may you transform our mind and help us to walk with you in spirit and in truth, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The title of my message is God and the Mind. God and the Mind. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want you to know that the mind is one of the most powerful tools God has given to man. The mind. When God created man and gave man a body, he created the brain in the body. And in the brain is where we have the mind. And the mind is one of the most powerful tools for God. Are you with me? If God is going to do something on earth, he needs a mind to work through it. Amen. Without a mind, God cannot express himself in the physical realm. Amen. I want to show you something from the Bible, what the Lord has taught me, which has helped me in my Christian work. It has helped me to develop my mind for God to use. Amen. Now, in our first scripture, we'll go to the book of Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verses number 5. Genesis chapter 6, verses number 5. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was continually evil. Verse 6. And it repented of the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now listen. God was beholding the deeds of man, and he realized that man was continually wicked. And the reason man was continually wicked was because the imagination of his heart was if we say, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So now, God wanted to move. God wanted to flow. God wanted to operate on earth. But God was being limited by the thinking pattern of man. Men had leaded, they have yielded their mind to the devil. And the devil was giving men evil thoughts, evil imagination. And because their thought was evil and full of wickedness, the only thing that they could produce was also wicked and evil. Amen. And when God saw it, the Bible said, it's a repented God that he has created man. Amen. You see, Everyone, before we get born again, there is a certain way we were brought up. There's a certain way we think, things we've heard, things we've watched on the television, things we've heard from radio and from other people. These things have become beliefs and thoughts in our mind. It has shaped the way we think. Hallelujah. You see, we may not realize it, but things we hear day in and day out, it shapes the way we think. It even affects the way we read the Bible. Because of a certain preaching, certain preachings have shaped our thinking in such that when we are reading the Bible, that preaching influences the way we explain the scripture. Most of us, the way we interpret scripture is based on a certain teaching, is based on a certain way of thinking, hallelujah, which may be true or which may not be true. Amen. So uh, thinking, our mind is one of the powerful tools God gives to us. Amen. If, the man, if a man wants to dominate another man, he does it by bringing that other man's mind under slavery. Amen. If a man is able to capture the thoughts of other men, he will control and manipulate those people. Amen. So even it is for God's soul that when God wants to walk with a man, he needs the man to bring his mind in thinking pattern with the way God thinks. 
if a man does not think as God think, he cannot manifest God. God cannot work with that man. You need to understand this. Amen. All right. In the book of Psalms, in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 72. Psalm 72. No, seven. Let me, let me. Psalm, sorry. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Come, God had brought Israel out of Egypt and they are on the wilderness. He's moving with the people of Israel. Now, something happened. I want you to see. Psalm 78, verse number 40. Psalm 78, verse number 40. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? So the Bible is talking about how the Israelites were provoking God and they were grieving him, making him sorrowful on the wilderness. Verse 41. Yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Listen, they turned back and they tempted God. And they limited the Holy One of Israel. Many of you believe that God can do anything. If God can do anything and God cannot be limited, why is the Bible say that the people of Israel limited God? I want you to tell you, God cannot do everything. God cannot do anything he wants to do unless he has got a man who thinks like him. If a man does not think like God, God cannot manifest through that man. Amen. So the Bible says in Psalm 78, verse 41, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Verse 42. That's where the point is. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. They what remembered not. They are thinking. You see, the Israelites did not fill their thoughts with the miracles God had done. Rather, their thoughts was filled with the things they saw in Egypt. So they were working with God on the way down this, but their imaginations was according to what they've been taught, what they've seen, what they've experienced in Egypt. Instead of re and renewing their mind instead of re bringing their mind to the new things God is doing to them, for them, their mind was rather on the things that they were experiencing in Egypt. You see, it is for this reason why, when you read the New Testament, okay, sorry, the Old Testament, when they get to a point, the Bible says that God will instruct Moses to write down the miracles, to write down certain things. And God will tell Moses that they should teach their children so that their children will always have it in their memory and remember what the Lord has done for them. Why does God want men to remember? Because when men do not remember, their thinking will shift from the works of God. Their thinking will shift from what God can do. Their imagination will come out of the ways of God. And when their imagination moves out of the way of God, God is limited in that man's life. Amen. Before God can work a miracle for you, before God can give you something, before you can see the manifestation of God in your life, beloved, your mind must be renewed. You must begin to fill your thoughts with God's thoughts. And actually, this is the reason why we read the Bible. We read the Bible not to make us feel that we are spiritual and special. We don't read the Bible to make us feel that, okay, we don't read the Bible to make us um, 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 get, get something. Uh, um, some people have this thought that when they read the Bible, it means um, God will give them a thumbs up. God will say, well done, I've read my Bible. Well, no. We read the Bible so that our mind, our imagination will be filled with the thoughts of God, will be filled with the word of God, so that it will permit God to flow through us. Listen, when God came in the flesh as Jesus Christ, and whilst he was walking in the city of Galilee and other uh, nations um, are surrounding Galilee and preaching, his main agenda was to change the way they think. The Jewish people had come to believe certain things. They have come to fill their thoughts with certain imagination, certain things according to what Moses taught them. And because of that, God, the God that they were calling upon, the God that they were serving, had come in the flesh. But because of the way they think, they could not even see God. 
they were blinded from seeing God because of the thoughts, the imaginations, their mind was filled with the things of the old covenant. You see, in the mind of the Jewish uh, people, they knew that this Messiah will come as a royal king, will come from the palace, and will be a king. Amen. So they were expecting a king. They were looking for a king. Um, but they didn't know that this king coming is not coming as a physical king, but a spiritual king. So, but they didn't know that. And because they didn't know that, their thoughts and imagination was focused on receiving a physical king from the tribe of David. Amen. Which is Judah. So they were expecting someone born from the family of Herod or someone born from the palace. And that is what they were looking for. And this God that they were receiving, this king they were expecting, came in a different way and all because the imagination was not in line with god's thoughts they missed the blessing of god god was among them yet they could not see god because of the way they were thinking because of what they've been taught beloved what you've been taught influence the way you think and what you the way you think influence how what you receive and what you do not receive you see through your thinking you can reject a blessing through a certain imagination, through a certain thinking pattern, you can reject a great blessing which is meant to be yours. Amen. God needs your mind to flow through you. God needs your mind to give you that miracle. God needs your mind to partner with him so that what he has promised you will come to pass. If you don't bring your mind in line with God, you can never see his miracles. You can never see his power in your life. You see, the Bible, uh, Paul was saying that he was once a Pharisee, a Jew, and he was very zealous for his religion, and he was saying all sorts of things, how he persecuted the church and all that. And he was saying that he was, when he was saying that, he said, when he was doing that, he was thinking actually that like he was serving God. Because that's what he was taught. So Paul's mind, before he got born again, in his mind, by killing the Christians, in his mind, he was serving God. In his mind, that is how we serve God. Amen. Until he met the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus gave him a different mindset, a different understanding, then he got to know that what he was doing is actually a sin. Beloved, there may be something that you are doing or there may be something that you are experiencing. It may not necessarily be a demon, but it's because you have not renewed your mind. You are not thinking as God thinks. Your thought is far from God. You have not been come to the place where you think like God. Your thought is filled with God's thoughts. You have not come to that place. And because of that, you are experiencing certain failures. Maybe God wants to do a certain miracle for you, but you don't believe that that miracle is possible. There are some people that they believe that he, sickness, sickness, it's part of Christianity. So though God has promised healing for all Christians, yet there are some people, they are rejecting God's healing because they've been taught that sickness is part of Christianity. So because of the way they think, because of the way they imagine things, because of the imagination and their thinking pattern, they are not receiving the healing power of God. So many people think that um, God is not answering their prayers. God is doing that. God is doing that. Actually, it is because of the way you are thinking. That is why you are not seeing the miracle you are praying for. It is because of the things you believe. That is why you are not seeing what you are praying for. If you change the way you think and begin to think according to God, begin to think according to how God wants you to think, which is according to the scripture, you begin to see a transformation in your life. Amen. Amen. I want to say this again. God needs your mind to flow through it. Amen. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter number 8. <clears throat> Alright, it says, Romans chapter number 8, verse 6. It says, For to be carnally minded is death. Carnal minded 
is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. So you see, <laughs> you are not experiencing life and peace in your life, in your marriage, in your workplace. And the reason why you are not experiencing, you are not seeing peace, you are not enjoying peace, is because the, according to the Bible, you are carnal minded. What does carnal minded mean? Let's look at the verse, the verse before that. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So we have two groups of people. There are some people who mind. That means their imagination, their thought is on physical things, fleshy things, carnal things. And there are some people, their mind is on spiritual things, which is the word of God. So the Bible is saying that those who have decided to mind things of the flesh they are carnal minded and they will express death so death in your marriage death in your business death in everything you do because you are carnal minded that means that you have let your mind to be filled with things of the flesh things of the world and those who are spiritual minded they will express life in peace so those who have allowed the word of god to dominate their thinking dominate control their mind those who have, allowed, who have studied and meditate on the word of god so that their mind will be controlled and dominated by the word of god those people they will find peace in what they are doing and life in everything they do most of us are praying for peace, 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 peace. The way to receive peace is to change your thinking and begin to think as God through the scriptures. And the next verse, Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God. Listen to that. When you begin to think like a worldly person, you cannot flow with God. Because he said the carnal mind is enemy against God. So you are you are a born again Christian. You want to operate power. You want to heal the sick. You want to experience miracles and all that. But what you are doing is that you are allowing your thought to be filled with worldly things. How can you flow with God's power? How can you experience the God's blessings? Because that thinking that you have allowed to enter into your mind, that thinking is against God. And if it's against God, you cannot receive from God. So it he continued said, for it is not subject to the law of God. In neither indeed can be the carnal mind has not submitted under the law of God, the word of God. The carnal mind, he is you are a born again Christian, yet you do not study and meditate on the Bible. In the Bible, you don't study and meditate on scripture, therefore, your thought is carnal. You think like an unbeliever, you talk like an unbeliever, you act like an unbeliever. You are acting and thinking like an unbeliever because you have not filled with your mind your thoughts with God's word. And because you are not filled your thoughts and mind with God's word, you act and behave like an unbeliever, therefore, you are carnal minded. And the Bible says that the result of being a carnal person is that you will see death in business, death in marriage, death in everything that you are doing. Death not necessarily as in you will die and you will be buried, but everything that you are doing, there will not be progress. You will not see progress in anything you are doing because you have not allowed your mind to be filled with God's word. But the Bible says the spiritual mind, the one who has allowed his mind to be filled with God's word, life and peace. The title of my message I said, God and the mind. God and the mind. Beloved, until you begin to study scripture, until you begin to renew your mind by studying scripture, until you begin to stop believing certain things and start believing things that is according to God's word, until you start come doing that and come to that point. Beloved, I tell you, you will not see the miracle power of God. You will not see the blessings of God. You will not see the promise of God operating and fulfilled in your life if you don't change the way you think by studying the Bible. Amen. This is the reason I'm stating the Bible. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed. That means that before God will walk with you, you must agree with him. And how can you agree with him? You must agree in the way you think. So you begin to think like God. That if you begin to think like God, then God can walk with you. And how do you think like God? Meditating on the scripture, read the Bible every day, and let the Bible change the way you think. Let the Bible shape your thinking pattern. 
some of you think of only defeat and failure continually bible says that god has given us victory in christ jesus but some of you it is all about failure 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 if you are thinking of failure how can you see victory in your life beloved we shall continue this message god willing now in this video but beloved i want to say one thing learn to change the way you think change the way you think study the bible read the bible let your thoughts be filled with god's word think like god by reading the bible let the word of God control your thinking. Let the word of God control your mind. Let the word of God fill all your thoughts. So that when you speak, it's like God speaking. When you think, it's like God thinking. When you act, it's like God act. Otherwise, you will never see success in this life. Hallelujah. This is the message the Lord asked me to bring to you. I believe and I know it has blessed you. I want you to share this message. I want you to listen to it over again and over again. The second video will come out um, in, our, uh, in our next um, discussion. And But before then, I want to pray with you. I want to pray that God will give you grace. The grace in the name of Jesus. I pray that from today, when you start reading the Bible, your eyes will be open. Your understanding will be open. You come to the point where when you read the Bible, you will understand. I pray for you that God will open the eyes of your heart. So anytime you study scripture, you will understand it in the name of Jesus. I pray that whatever that is causing you not to have time to sit with the word of God, to learn and study the word of God, may that power of darkness be broken off your life. I pray and I command that let any demonic, any demonic um, power that has bind you any demonic power that is stopping and preventing you from studying the word of god i command that power to be broken in the name of Jesus. i command you that you are set free i speak freedom into you i speak freedom for you that from today you are free to study the word of god meditate on the scriptures in the name of jesus hallelujah my name is reverend kinsley this program is called man of eternity Beloved, follow this um, um, program on Facebook, Men of Eternity. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Men of Eternity. And also my personal page, Rabbi R A B B I Kinsley, K I N G S L E Y, Kakim, C H A K K I M, Rabbi Kinsley Kakim. Also on Facebook, follow. And on Facebook, Men of Eternity, follow. And also on YouTube subscribe to the channel men of eternity we are also on google podcast men of eternity spotify men of eternity and also podbean men of eternity the lord richly bless you the lord keep you we shall meet again another time until then i say peace